God spoke um, in the mountain is a widely quoted scripture of teaching. Um, and it goes from the Beatitudes to the Lord's Prayer. Um, Jesus traveled before them from town to town in regions of Galilee. And he preached to Jewish synagogues and healed sick. So you know all the miracles that he created. Um, he became very popular with the people and great, cow great crowds followed him wherever he went. So because he was growing a lot, a huge population of people, he decided one day to go to the mountain, okay? And he spoke to his disciples, and he took those crowds of people, and that's what's called the Sermon on the Mount. Um, the Sermon on the Mount outlines the right ways to approach God, how to come to God, as well as how to deal with other people. Anyone in here ever been hiking? Yeah? Kind of, sort of? Yeah. Maybe that kind of sort of might be a little walk in the park, you know, that's a wooded area. Yeah. So I'm not talking about that kind of hiking. I mean the hiking where you pack your, you pack a first aid kit, bottles of water, snacks, and you get out really early in the morning because, you know, at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, it's pitch black in the woods. That's the kind of hiking that I'm talking about. Okay? I'm a city girl by nature and by heart, grew up in the Washington, D.C. area. And so my first camping experience was actually a haunted cabin for a week-long stay in West Virginia. Okay, so I'm not going to get into the details of how haunted it was, because it was indeed haunted. Okay? Um, but one of the things that I took away from that is an appreciation for the silence. Okay? Um, now, I grew up in a middle, upper-class suburbia, far enough away from Washington, D.C., um, where you avoid the congestion and the hustle, but close enough um, to be convenient. So it was quieter than it would be, but it was still some noise. So the first thing I had to get adjusted to with the camping experience was the silence. And it was a silence that was so loud, it was deafening. Mm -hmm. You can hear your heart beating in your ears. You can even hear your digestion. <laughs> it was just the weirdest experience I've ever had in my life. Um, but again, you walk away with that appreciation for the silence and the appreciation for the life that God has given everything. Amen. which includes the trees, the animals, even me, okay? Um, it makes sense to think that Jesus went up into the mountain because he had a large amount of people, and if everybody knows who's been in the mountains, there's great acoustics, okay? So he would stand up on the, on the top of the mountain and talk to a group of people. But I think that God um, went to the mountain uh, because he knows, he knew that that was the best way for people to have an opportunity to listen to the words that he had to say without distraction and so that they can appreciate the silence. Because mm -hmm. only in the silence, God is able to speak to you, mm -hmm. which means you have to silence your mind, you have to silence your words, and just listen to what he has to say. Mm -hmm. Okay? So um, the title of today's sermon today is <coughs> Be a Salt Shaker and Shine Bright Like a Diamond. Hallelujah. Now I did it because we had, we we're going to have a few more younger people here, so I feel like they would probably know. But I'm hoping that the younger people here know that these are two very um, popular songs. <laughs> okay, so I want you to look at your neighbor to the right, and I want you to say, be a salt shaker. Be a salt shaker. Shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. Okay, now turn to your other neighbor, whichever, right left. <laughs> Be a salt shaker, shine bright like a Amen. Okay. So there's three components to salt, and you guys are probably are very familiar with the scripture. But I'm hoping that the sermon that I'm giving you is going to be a little bit different. You're going to learn some things. I obviously have a science background, so I know a lot about science. So you're going to learn a few things. Um, so salt purifies. It's an antiseptic. Um, back in the times before penicillin, they used to use it as a way to rub into wounds so that they, the bacteria dies off and it prevents it from getting infected further. It preserves, so it's a preservative. When you look at cups of noodles and um, canned meat, the first, the hugest ingredient in there is salt um, because it's the best thing that preserves over the course of years. Um, the topic that I want to get in on uh, for the component of salt is its flavor, okay? So our constant interaction with non-believers keeps the world from decaying further. Um, anybody ever tried eating one Lay's potato chip? <laughs> you can't eat just one, right? No. Okay. Me and my mom's favorite right now is actually Lay's uh, version of wasabi ginger. That's our favorite one right there. You can't eat just one. And I dare you all to go to the store and buy it and try to eat just one. 
<laughs> if you like sushi, even if you don't like sushi, you're gonna like wasabi ginger. So the chips are salty, right? Um, which makes you want to thirst for more, and that's the whole the whole thing. Is oh my gosh, I'm so good, I just want some more. When people look at our lives as Christians, do they do they want to thirst for the righteousness of God? Wow. And that's a, a concept that you need to think about. Yeah. Theodore Roosevelt <clears throat> was quoted as saying, no man is worth his salt who is not ready at all times to risk his body, his well-being, and his life in a great cause. Okay? Mm -hmm. My mother is a type A personality, even though she doesn't look it. She's very quiet. She is a type A personality. She knows what she wants. She has high expectations when we were younger, high expectations for her children. So as a supervisor, when she was in the federal government, she had high expectations for herself and her subordinates. That's where me and my sister got it from. Like, we're very, very type A people. Um, but my mom, over the course of years of being a supervisor and obviously being a mother, she's learned that in order to be an effective type A personality or an effective leader, you have to give people the tools to um, lead themselves. Okay? You have to give them the tools to know. So the tools that we have is the Word of God. Okay? So God is giving us the tools. God is a type A personality. Obviously, he's like, no. It's not going to happen. It's not kind of, sort of. It's either not now or no. <laughs> okay? So those are pretty direct. So God wants you, um, turn in your Bibles to 2 Timothy 2 5. And Bobby, uh, you might not have to worry about doing this because okay. I've got quite a few. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so 2 Timothy 2 and 15. And you have it, just say amen. 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 If you don't say, wait a minute. Second <laughs> Timothy 2 and verse 15. And it reads, work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. So again, God wants you to be a hard worker, a worker not ashamed of your gifts and talents um, that he has given you. Your tools on the job, again, is the word of God. That is your instrument, um, helping us become a better us in him. Um, one of the things, I, I do have a few pet peeves. Um, within the church, I'm going to admit right now. <laughs> not situations going on here, but just in life. I'm not a big fan of those little liver Christians, okay? I call them little liver Christians. Um, they've been born again about six or seven times, and they can't seem to figure out why. And then so they get born again again. Or been baptized again six or seven, ten times. They call themselves Christians and have been Christians for a fulfilling amount of years. But it's the type of people that want to be leading everything in the church, but don't necessarily want to get out and help the church grow mm -hmm. or help bring people in or teach people, okay? Those are the type of people that just, I, I can't really get them. And what I call them is the 300 pounds of salt. So salt is knowledge. What is the point in having all the knowledge if you don't open yourself up to teaching people, okay? So it's like a teacher that doesn't teach. Right. Lisa's a teacher. Does it make any sense to be a teacher and not teach people? Mm -hmm. Just like going through an entire college education, paying for it. I paid God knows how much for my education. Mm -hmm. And if, if I didn't use the knowledge that I received, it would all be worthless. So mm -hmm. all that salt was nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, there are two purposes in this life. It's to be an example and to teach. So the first scripture for being an example is going to be 1 Peter 5 and 3. I'm going to have you move around a little bit only because for your study at home when you do revisit um, the word, you'll be able to understand what I'm saying. So I'm basically going to be going through these next two scriptures pretty quickly. 1 Peter 5 and 3. And it reads... Don't lord it over the people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. Okay, so be the example. And the second is to teach. And that's going to be Isaiah 61 and 1. Hello. 
And if you're going too fast, be like, hold on. <laughs> Say, hold on. Isaiah 61 and 1. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. Amen. Amen. So God is calling you and I to put some of that knowledge in a salt shaker, okay? And sprinkle, dabble, splash, dollop it all over <laughs> his people, okay? Um, there's a quote that, that really speaks about this, that talks about an impact on a culture of change. And it's a, and a philosopher is the one that quoted it, even though I couldn't figure out what his name was. But he said that a church that fails to change fails to impact a culture of change. Everybody following me so far? Okay. Yeah. The church becomes a memorial um, to a world that no longer exists. Okay. It becomes spiritually and biblically irrelevant. Pointless. Just like salt turns ta tasteless and light flickers, dims, or doesn't even shine at all. Okay. Um, Matthew 5, 6 says, God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. These are the kind of people that I like. They've been so run down by life. Um, they've been dragged up, not raised up. They really had a hard life. Um, but when they turn their lives to Christ, they can't just have one experience, just like that Lay's potato chip, because they're introduced to a spiritual salt, um, and they want more. Okay. So the church is in desperate need of a salt shaker. Will you be one? Amen. My last hiking trip, and I never told my mom, says so I would love to see her expression if I had to have the camera. <laughs> my last um, hiking trip was um, in the Appalachian Mountains, and I went with a couple friends, and we stayed at a cabin, and it was one of those dry cabins, so it wasn't like running water. Um, and we were at a, a, a offsite of the cabin and walking in the night, and it was pitch black. And we were like, okay, we don't hear anything, so it's okay sometimes, because you can follow the trail and use the moon, you can actually see a little bit better. But this night, it was pitch black, it was cloudy, and it was a little creepy. So I thought, maybe I would, you know, pull my cell phone out, and you get one of those little light bulb apps that uh, women yeah. usually use in their phone to locate where their, you know, left stick is in their purse. Um, I decided to go ahead and just pop it on. Now, the second I popped it on, it's like the whole woods lit up like a Christmas tree because it's, it's completely dark and right. you've got this bright light all of a sudden. What we didn't realize about 10 feet ahead of us was a gentleman, very scruffy looking, Duck Dynasty type, with a gun slung over the shoulder and he's walking toward us. We didn't see him at all. It creeped us out. Um, God, or Jesus spoke of himself as the light of the world. So turning your Bibles with me again to John 8. John 8 and 12. John 8 and 12, and it reads, Jesus spoke to the people and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you have the light that leads to life. Amen. The relationship between those two scriptures um, is that Jesus is the source of the light and the Christians are a reflection of that light. Okay? Yes. So the cell phone yes. light stuff. that lit up about a quarter mile of the hiking trail ahead of us um, could be seen for miles if anybody was standing at any kind of elevation. Okay. Um, those whose lives exhibit the trace of Christ cannot be hidden. So has anybody ever come to you and say, what is it that's different about you? Why is that in the midst of chaos, you still remain calm? Why is that in the midst of tragedy, you still seem hopeful? Okay. When I used to work in research, um, one of the downsides to working there is that you culled and euth or euthanized, meaning you put down a lot of animals and collected samples from them. It's, it's 
it's a necessity of the job. Most of the medications you're taking now were tested on animals in order for them to get permission to test on you. <laughs> so you have to have an appreciation for the animals. Say, everybody say amen for the animals. <laughs> okay. But the distinct sense of death, um, those last moments of life are very familiar to me. And so my response to tragedy and chaos and emergency is a lot different. So um, the job, my last job that I was working, um, there was a lady that came in frantically crying and yelling, please help, you know, my cat Tabby is dying. Um, the cat was in the carrier having seizures, completely discombobulated, like he didn't know what he was doing. He was screaming, hollering. I don't know if you've ever heard a cat scream or holler, but it sounds like a young child. It's really bad. Um, so everybody on the scene that worked there panicked. One coworker, and I hate to to laugh about it, but she literally ran around in circles because she couldn't figure out what to do first. <laughs> okay, she's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I was like, what are you doing? The second person um, that worked with me, she was practically yelling at the hysterical woman, telling her to calm down. But nobody was addressing the cat that was in pain. Okay? So while they're handling their tragedy in their own, you know, the tragedy in their own way, I immediately scooped up the animal in the carrier and took it back, got a doctor to start resuscitation. It was obvious that the pet was going to die. But why make its last moments painful? Okay. So we are a peculiar people. <clears throat> and in Romans 8, 18 and 9, I'm going to read Whoa, it real quickly. <laughs> verses. Yeah. Romans 8, 18 and 19. Yet we suffer now, yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for the future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Because we are a peculiar people, we allow God's light to shine through us, and we don't look at things the same. Okay? We use wisdom in the struggle, and that's what keeps us calm. That's what keeps us hopeful. Amen? Amen. So let your light shine. How many women in the house are married? Okay, keep your hands up. <laughs> and those who are married, how many is diamond is real? How many diamonds? The diamond? How, the diamond is real. In the ring? <laughs> yeah, in the ring. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it wasn't. But um, what is a diamond? A diamond is a stone that was created under a lot of pressure over a number of years, right? Um, it has a, ref a high refraction index. So this is where science comes in. about some um, glass, a sheet of glass has, if light hits the sheet of glass, it reflects off of the surface, the first surface, and then it reflects off of the bottom half of the other side of that piece of glass as it's leaving, right? Okay. So the two reflections equal one refraction. When I used to sell glasses, we learned that glasses have what's called a higher visual acuity, meaning a clarity, um, than plastic and through in uh, polycarbonate, which is a form, it's a polymer of plastic. Um, so you can see clear out of glass and plastic than you can anything else. But what people don't realize is that the best visual acuity is with a diamond, okay? So what a diamond does is a light hits a diamond at one angle, and there's so many prisms inside, so many fractures inside the diamond, that it bounces off, like with the glass, it bounces off inside and never leaves the diamond, okay? So as people, we have many layers. There's loneliness, there's depression, there's hurt. Um, as a Christian, when Jesus, as the light source, hits us at that angle, his Holy Spirit enters us, and it bounces off of all those layers of pain. It heals those layers, and it resides in us, okay? That's what makes a diamond shine. That's what makes us shine. Amen. God did not intend for us to hoard our light, um, but to shine with, it, but to shine, but to share with others. Um, God did not call you to be comfortable; He called you to be obedient. Amen. So, what I would like to call you to do, and I'm very glad that Pastor Willie read um, his poem because it, it confirmed a lot of things with this sermon. Dare to be the Christian that God called you to be. And the way you can do that is to dare to be a salt shaker and dare to be or shine bright like a diamond. We are formed under pressure, mm -hmm. under the, the, the 
think that she uh, called out pressure, the troubles, sometimes the pain, mm -hmm. and, you know, the pains of life, the uh, unfortunate things that happen to us often. Mm -hmm. But God gets a jewel Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. out of us Amen. through all of these things Thank that we deal with. So whatever you're facing in your life today, it's not in vain if you love God. Yes. If you love the Lord, what you're going through is you're just going through a process. Yeah. You're just getting from He's just getting you from where you are to where you need to be. Amen. Amen. Amen.